Hello, everybody. Um, I'd like to add my welcome um, to, uh, for joining us here at Overland today. My name is Perry Grover, and I'm the director of product marketing for our Tate business. I'm going to spend just a very few brief minutes today um, going over our overall product line. We're going to spend certainly the majority of the time today talking about our Snap Scale product. But as Eric alluded to, we have a very broad portfolio of products, so we wanted to just take a few minutes and um, go over those with you. So whether it's primary storage, secondary storage, tertiary, archive, what, you know, whatever you want to call it, we've really got the, the um, breadth of what people need to cover uh, in terms of data storage in, their, in, their, uh, in our portfolio. I saw a statistic um, just recently that every day we are creating 2.5 quintillion bytes of data which it equated to 500 new websites being created every minute of every day, 48 hours of video being created every minute be of every website. day, so or a half a billion emails being sent every minute of every day. So obviously we all know a lot of data going around. And we all know that depending on who you talk to, that data is increasing 20 to 50% a year. The problem is IT budgets are not. So where we, we, where we are really focused on with our product portfolio is providing the right combination of products that can address that capacity growth, the flexibility needed to address that capacity growth, um, but at affordable uh, price points. So in the upper left uh, hand corner of the uh, chart, you see an overview of our SnapSAN uh, storage area networking products. Uh, basically high performance block level storage, really optimized for virtualized environments, uh, very much focused on uh, providing a, a high performance solution. On the upper right hand side, um, this is where we'll spend the bulk of our conversation today, is our NAS line. So whether it's our SNAP scale, uh, which is our clustered scale out NAS, or whether it's our SNAP server, more traditional kind of scale up <coughs> NAS, uh, a broad product portfolio of NAS products as well. In the lower left, you see um, our Rio series VTL appliance. As you, I think, probably know VTLs, the best way I uh, explain VTL to people is it's a good crossover between disk and tape um, because it gives you the performance of disk but the compatibility and ease of integration of tape. And then certainly, um, it would, goes without saying that tape is still a vital part of the IT data center. Uh, so we have our Neo series of product lines uh, for long-term backup archive disaster recovery. Uh, this slide just gives you a, a brief overview of in their individual segments how, um, you know, what an architecture might look like. Now, recognizing of course that no one size fits all and the right architecture is a combination of the different technologies. You know, a true data center would have a much more complex graphic than this. But this is just sort of meant to break down how, how you can see these uh, products playing in their individual spaces. So obviously at the primary storage level, um, the, for instance, the SnapSAN S5000 is going to be uh, backing up servers over probably a fiber channel SAN, um, going again, as I alluded to earlier, focus on high performance. It has uh, like auto tiering, auto cache, uh, some of those kinds of features designed for very heterogeneous environments. On the VTL side, I hit on this a little earlier, uh, that of course um, through the VTL appliance is either going to be attached to a back, backup server over the SAN itself or over a local area network. Uh, easy to install, easy to use, again looks like disk, acts like disk, smells like disk, but also like tape. So it gives you that flexibility of connectivity. And then certainly on the Neo tape libraries, um, those are LTO only today, you know, LTO rules the tape world. Uh, SAS and fiber, of course, um, are, are options today. We've all gone to a technology we call ADI, so you connect via the drive, so whatever the drive interface is, what the library interface is. Uh, all, uh, all centered around performance, capacity, scalability, flexibility, um, certainly, um, you know, long media life and the connectivity with so, so is the RDX product in, integrated in the Rio, or how does that work? Or? Um, not yet. So we, we haven't completed the acquisition yet. Oh, okay. So those things will happen 
um, the, the two product lines will merge once that acquisition has been completed. Okay? But certainly RDX, you know, gives you, because basically RDX is disk in a tape-like cartridge, right. you could do things like put it in a library. Um, okay, so from the Neo series overview, I'll just take a quick few minutes here to give you an overview of our tape line. The re we really see two distinct types of users in the um, tape space. Uh, either customers who are focused on, I have a lot to back up, I don't have much budget, I don't have any resources, I need it to be simple, I need it to be relatively affordable. And that's who our Neo series um, product line is, is uh, aimed at. So in just a very small form factor, a 1U can start at 56 terabytes in a 1U form factor, or we can store up to 300 terabytes in a 4U form factor, very dense. Now if you look at the other type of user of a tape library, who probably needs more capacity, certainly is more performance oriented, Probably less concerned about how much I'm going to spend up front, but it looks more at long-term cost of ownership, ROI type things. Definitely more dynamic environments and need more flexibility. Uh, then we have our Neo E-Series uh, libraries for those folks. It's a scalable architecture, so it's a little bit like Lego building blocks, putting multiple pieces together and coming up with whatever version you need. Again, uh, storing anywhere from about 188 terabytes of data all the way up to over three petabytes. So very, very flexible. Um, we talk about, let's talk a minute just about tape and the role tape plays in the data center. And I've even seen some of you write about this, so we'll be very brief about this. Um, the only people that talk about tape going away are disk companies. Uh, end users are still using a lot of tape. I mean, we talk to them every day. You talk to them. Um, there's still a lot of inherent advantages um, for it to have tape in the data center for long-term data storage. The portability of it. Um, certainly the cost per gigabyte, the cost of ownership. You know, it costs less, has better density, has more capacity, um, lower cost of ownership in terms of energy. So a lot of cost benefits for long-term storage of your data. Uh, reliability, um, whether it's, you know, from the um, tapes aren't subject to viruses, for instance. Tape has a 30-year shelf life, so some of those things. Um, a lot of innovation still going on in tape. Uh, so a lot of reasons to keep tape in the data center for, for the ultimate destination of folks' data. Okay? Uh, that's it for me. Again, a very quick uh, overview. If you have any questions, please bring them up as we go on. And I'm going to turn it over to Joe to take us to the next segment. Thanks so much, Perry. All right. So we'll get through the last of the specsmanship. You guys are probably done looking at data sheet stuff, and we'll get into some of the details. Uh, this is just more of the product portfolio that we have out there. I'm going to talk about our SAN product really quick. We have three models that are available, our S1000, our S3000, and our S5000. Uh, really, the, the, the main differences come between the S1000 and then, of course, the S3 and S5000 have, are their own kind of subfamily. The S1000 is based on the, the lower really geared towards customers that are looking for a lower cost solution. They don't have a lot of performance needs necessarily for a SAN, right? SAN is performance. Um, and, it, and our particular S1000 has all the, the connectivity that they're looking for. You have iSCSI 1 gig and 10 gig, fiber channel. And of course, if you're not ready to go to a network, you can use a direct attach and use your SAS connection. The S3000 and S5000, uh, pretty straightforward, same connectivity. Uh, 1 gig, 10 gig, 8 gig fiber channel. Uh, you have your SAS connection, again, for those that don't want a network. And the big difference now between the S1000 and the other two products, with the S3 and S5, you get things like replication, so remote replication uh, between sites, site-to-site -site replication. You get volume cloning. You get some snapshotting. You get some more advanced features that integrate throughout. And you also get uh, some advanced features relative to SSD and SSD caching. Um, it's, it is, as Perry pointed out, optimized uh, to, to really uh, help the, the higher end enterprise where they need primary storage. The S5000 in particular adds a couple of features relative to um, auto tiering, so that's the ability to tier between different types of pools of storage, whether it's SATA, nearline SAS, uh, SAS, and then of course SSD. So lots of things there. We're not going to spend a lot of time talking about this. They're all dual controller, single or dual controller options. 
pretty traditional in the SAN area. I think you guys are familiar with what these products can do. In fact, I think some of you have probably reviewed them. Short question. Yeah. Why are the options tin provisioning, volume cloning, and then the auto cache, auto tune, worm um, only available on the higher end? I mean, is that a soft? Is that a hardware limit somehow? It is not actually. So it is a why would you limit that to the lower? Why would you limit the options for the lower it, models? It is a differentiation, and it's really a price play. So what we're trying to do is offer the, the solutions and the features based on the performance that the product can deliver. So, so I'm going to back up half a step. You asked, is it performance-related or hardware-related? Not really, meaning I can run all those features on the S3000, for example. However, that being said, the higher-performing S5000 does all those things much better. And what we find is just from the standpoint of the cost, we'd have to charge more for the S3000. At that point in time, we've kind of eliminated the differentiation. And really what it comes down to, the performance deltas are what they are. But we also find that those customers that are looking for that performance are also looking for those advanced features, whereas the reverse has not really been the case. We could flip those bits if we decide to, but we're always asking yeah. our customers that question. It's a great point. And, uh, I wouldn't see the reason why you would not make it available for an S3000. It's really, as Howard pointed okay. out, it's about product differentiation. Thanks. It's a good question. Any, anything else on the SAM product before I flip forward? So I know you guys know nothing about disk storage, so I'm going to talk about NAS and scale out NAS. No, I'm not. Um, so <laughs> this slide really just is about... Uh, Something the no throwing things rule. <laughs> oh, no, that's okay. You can throw things. If I can move, I get to win something. <laughs> Um, so scale up NAS, these terms have become uh, pretty well known over the last few years. Scale up NAS, simple, you can add more disk space, more disk drives to a single head unit. You can add JBODs behind it and expand that way. You have some limits with, with connectivity, capacity, so on and so forth. I'll let, I'll let our present, presentation that's next go into more details on the differences. Scale out NAS uh, does have the same features for the most part. Um, plus the ability to scale out broadly, which gives you the ability to scale not only in capacity, which we all love, but also in performance. Uh, you get more horsepower per node. We'll talk about those terms a little bit more later. I think you guys are all very familiar with that. As you add more nodes, you get more performance, more capacity. We have a couple of different models, um, and I'll talk about that real briefly, but we're going to go into more detail on the scale out products in, in just a bit. The Snap Server family is our scale up uh, family. So the Snap Server family has been around for a long time. We, we uh, believe it or not, for those that can remember, we've been selling NAS uh, over 15 years now. So we've had, we've had just your way back when we started with a single drive network attached storage device. Now we're all the way up to uh, a 12 drive 2U box, which is the DX2 on your left. It scales up to 384 terabytes raw. Uh, we can scale the DX1. It's a single power supply, however, so we find that folks that want to scale that product, scale it up, are really only using it for archive data, scratch space, things like that. Uh, these products are unified in their, in their design and architecture, and what I mean by that is they service both block and file. So iSCSI block, and then NFS, SIFS, AFP, FTP, HTTP, so all the pretty typical protocols. We also have, uh, I'll skip over the SNAP expansion. It's a JBOD. What, that is. Uh, what else is there to say? Yes, the end. <laughs> the Snap Server 210, two drive box. It's been around uh, for quite a long time. We find that very, very popular in what Eric talked about in one of our previous presentations in the distributed enterprise. Distributed enterprise simply being a, an enterprise customer that has multiple sites 10, 100, 800, 1,000, and they need some local storage at each site with, that doesn't require a lot of administration, but then they need to do something with that data. We have other software that allows you to get that data up to a central site, back it up, protect it, so on and so forth. And we have, uh, we have a slide we'll talk about our replication package a little bit later. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this slide because you're going to see it in about five minutes. Um, what I will focus on is the differences between the SnapScale X2 and the SnapScale X4. You see a single node there for each one of the products. The X2 is really geared towards the performance space, virtualization, databases, obviously unstructured data. Um, but because it's a smaller form factor, you get more horsepower as you scale out capacity. Because every time you add a node, you get more CPU, you get more memory, you get more network ports, 
more, 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 more. Um, so the Snapscale X2 is focused on the performance space, whereas the X4 is really focused and geared towards those capacity plays where they just need deep, dense storage. Um, one of the things we found out, and I won't steal Jeremy's thunder, but he'll go into this in a little bit. Uh, one of the interesting statistics when you look out there at the market space, when you're talking about massive amounts of, of big data repositories, is what the challenge that they run into is actually space. We hear about power and cooling all the time, which is real. Absolutely, 100%. But space is also a major concern. And so having the high density solution with the X4 gives us the opportunity to kind of fill out that market segment. And you'll have lots of time for questions on the SNAP scale product. So if you have anything for me now, we can, we can talk about that. No? Great. <coughs> well, that's it for me. I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Jeremy Zuber now. And he's going to dive into some of the high level stuff on our SNAP scale product line. So thanks a lot.